Hey everybody, Carl Schuff here from Greensock. Today I want to show you how custom bounce can dynamically generate ease curves for realistic bounces. You can quickly change the strength of the bounce and even add additional effects like squash and stretch that are perfectly synchronized with the bounce. When we created custom ease, which allows you to take any ease path and edit it inside of our ease visualizer, or draw them in Illustrator, we found out that drawing this type of a path in the visualizer is pretty tough. And even using a program like Illustrator, generating these types of curves, you know, takes a real steady hand. More often than not, my hand-drawn bounce curves look like total garbage like this. So that's why we came up with Custom Bounce, a tool that would generate these really smooth and realistic bounce curves for you. Let me show you how I can use it in a project. Over here in CodePen, I have a very basic demo set up where we have a custom bounce running already. All right, I want to show you that in the JavaScript settings here that I'm loading both custom bounce and custom ease, all right? Custom bounce is literally going to create path data that's going to be passed into custom ease. And I'll walk you through how that's going to work in just a little bit. So for this basic bounce animation, let me just go through some of the code we have already. I'm setting the duration of my animation. I have a timeline created. And the most important thing here is that I'm creating a custom bounce using custom bounce dot create. Okay. The first parameter that I pass into create is the string reference that I want to use for the name of this ease. And then we have this vars object where we can set a few different parameters. Right now I'm setting the strength of the ease, which controls how bouncy the animation is going to be. Strength values can be between 0 and 1, and right now a strength of 0 0.4 is relatively tame. In my timeline, I'm just animating the ball along the y-axis, and for the ease, I'm using that same string name as the ease that I just created, okay, with custom bounce. So let's take a look at what the 0 0.4 strength looks like. We just get a few little subtle bounces here at the end. If I crank that up to 0 0.6, you're going to see that it becomes bouncier, okay? So there's a few more bounces, it's a stronger bounce. Now at this point in the demonstration, I think it would really help to actually see the easing curves that custom bounce generates. So check it out. In the HTML here, I have an SVG that has a path in it called bounce and squash, and it actually has that ball in there, okay? What I'm going to do in the JavaScript is tap into custom eases get SVG data, okay? So I'm just gonna uncomment this line of code here that says, hey, custom ease, get the SVG data for the ease with this name, my bounce, which we're using up top. And we're going to render it to any path that we find with an ID of bounce, and we're setting the width and the height that it should be rendered at. And now we can see the actual ease curve. So when I go up here and I change the strength to be 0 0.9, you're going to see a drastic change in the curve that gets generated, all right? So one thing to keep in mind is that while you're configuring the strength of your ease, it's also important to keep in mind the duration of your animation, all right? So if you're gonna have this many bounces, um, you may want to give your animation more time. So I'm just gonna crank this up to about five seconds. And now you can see uh, it's a little bit more bouncier and by slowing it down, it gives this ball more of sort of a weightless feel. So before I get into all those cool squash and stretch effects, I want to talk more about how custom bounce needs custom ease in order to operate. Previously, I told you that custom bounce is going to pass in SVG data into custom ease. So let me just show you how that works. I've already used custom ease SVG data to generate or render this path to my SVG. Well, this method also returns the SVG path data. So I'm just going to do a very simple alert on whatever that method returns. I'm going to hit run and then I'm going to get this whole entire string here. Okay. And what this string is, is the SVG path representation of that bounce. So I'm going to go back over to the green sock ease visualizer and I'm going to go into custom mode. And just like we can see the path data for this path right here, as I move things around, I'm going to paste in the path data that custom bounce generated for me when I created that ease. When I hit run, you'll see now that it changes over to that exact ease path, okay? So at the end of the day, custom bounce is just creating path data that gets passed into custom ease. So I wanna talk next about how we can apply the animation principle of squash and stretch to our custom bounce animations. In very simple terms, squash and stretch just means that when an object hits the ground, it's going to squash down or flatten a little bit and then elongate as it's accelerating up off the ground. 
and there'll also be some stretching involved as the object approaches the ground, okay? So what we're gonna do is create a custom squash ease that's gonna be perfectly synchronized with our custom bounce. Let's jump into the code. So the first step in creating the squash effect is we're going to add a squash property that we pass into custom bounce.create. So it looks like this, we're gonna say squash, and then I'm just gonna use the value of four right now, okay? And this basically represents how long the object should stay squashed for. And this will be more clear once we start showing you the actual ease curve that's being generated, all right? So we're just telling custom bounce right now, also create a squash component for me or a squash curve. And we need to apply that easing curve primarily to the scale Y property, because that's what's gonna control squishing or squashing the height of this ball. So let me add one more animation to my timeline. I'm gonna say dot two, the target is still gonna be the ball. We're still gonna use that duration value in both tweens. And the property we're going to change again is going to be scale Y, we'll start with that. And I'll squash down to a value of say 0 0.3 to make it somewhat extreme. And we're going to set the ease as my bounce dash squash, okay? As soon as we tell custom bounce that we're going to do a squash, it creates an additional ease curve using the name of my original bounce, so we called it my bounce, and it appends dash squash to that name, okay? Um, one thing I want to make sure I do here is start these animations at the same time. So in this timeline, I'm just going to use a position parameter of zero. So if all goes well, we should see some squashing the next time I run. Let's go. So here, the ball comes down, and you see that, yes, we get some interesting squashing there. Uh, the problem is that we're still using the default transform origin of the center. So let me just change that to be transform origin, and we'll say uh, bottom, and I'm gonna hit run. And now you'll see that this thing squashes all the way down, okay? And it looks really pretty cool. Um, so we're only squashing vertically now, let me also put in a scale X of 1.5. So it's going to expand horizontally. We'll hit run. And there you'll see, boom, get this really cool, nice squashiness. So let me just scrub back here. I just wanna show you that when it hits the ground, it stays on the ground while it compacts or squashes. And then it starts growing a little bit and then it shoots off the ground, all right? So it's staying stuck on the ground while it's doing this squash and stretch routine, okay? And that's what this flat line in this easing graph now means, okay? Notice how the bounce graph no longer creates like fine points where it hits quickly and then comes back, all right? We're going all the way to our end Y value and now the bounce is literally stopping. There's no change right here. So what's happening is custom bounce is allowing for the squash to happen during this gap here. And same here and same here, all right? So again, here we have motion, all right? So we're in this part of the curve as the ball drops down. It hits the ground, it meets, reaches its maximum Y value, and it stays there as it squashes down and then stretches and starts moving back. So by adding the squash, we've literally changed the My Bounce Ease. But let's take a look at what that squash ease actually looks like. What I'm going to do is just activate this commented out piece of code down here, where we're going to use get SVG data again to now take the myBounce.squash ease, and we're going to render it on a path with an ID of squash. And again, that path already exists inside of my SVG. So now the next time I run, we're going to see an entirely different and new ease added to this visualization here, okay? And the red ease is now the squash ease that we're seeing, okay? And you'll notice that it starts out really flat, okay? That means that there's no change in the scale X or scale Y values until we reach that point where the bounce stops, where we hit the ground, and then it very quickly starts changing those scale X and scale Y values, and then they bounce back out, okay? and then that diminishes over time. All right, so again, when I scrub down through this initial part of the animation, there's no change in the scale X or scale Y, but as soon as we get down to where that Y motion stops, you'll see now we get that compacting, 
and then it expands, and then we're going to then start boom, bouncing up. And so right now we're in this part of the squash ease. So the beauty of this, of course, is that we don't need to draw these two paths in Illustrator or anywhere else, okay? And I can change the strength of my ease at any point in time, make that 0 0.9, and it's going to obviously update both of those paths for me, all right? If I want to uh, change the squash factor, I'm gonna bring that down to about two. And basically what you're gonna see is that this flat part of the curve is going to get a little more narrow. It's going to have less time to actually squash. So you can get a lot of different effects just by changing the strength or the squash or the duration of the animation and the actual properties that are being squashed, all right? So you can fine tune this stuff like crazy and really get that exact animation and feel that you want. Now, one of the things we can do with custom bounce is instead of having the ball drop from the sky and bounce off the ground, it can start on the ground, jump up, and then come to a slow bounce at the end. So the way we're gonna do that is we're going to add one more parameter to our custom bounce.create and we're going to do end at start, set that equal to true. And if I just add that, this animation is going to look very funky because it sort of squashes and does some weird crazy thing in the air. So what we gotta do is actually set this up the right way so that the ball starts on the ground and then goes up into the air. So I'm gonna do a tween light dot set and I'm gonna tell the ball that it's going to start at a Y of 550. That's currently where we're animating to on the bottom here. And we're gonna swap it around in my timeline animation, we're gonna to animate to a Y of zero. So now when I do a run, notice that the ball starts at the ground, jumps up, and does this very big bounce stuff with the squash. If I go back to the beginning, I wanna show you that before we do the first hop, that it actually starts with a little bit of a squash and stretch where it's getting loaded up and then it accelerates into the air and we do that kind of a jam. For something like this, I probably wouldn't use such a high strength. I might bring that down to about 0 0.5 and let's do a run and see how that goes. All right, boing. There we have zero gravity. All right, but it draws all these crazy curves for you, does all the heavy lifting, and again, the options are virtually limitless here. And if you like custom bounce, definitely check out custom wiggle, which allows you to do the same thing where you can set parameters for your wiggle eases. So we're gonna have something wiggle five times here, or we can make it wiggle a whole lot more. Let's change that over to 50, hit run, and so we have to worry about drawing this kind of a curve in Illustrator. And we also have some custom wiggle types that you can play around with, like Anticipate, where the object is going to move away from the start values and then do the wiggle towards the end out. Both Custom Wiggle and Custom Bounce are available to Club Greensock members. Your Club Greensock membership gives you access to premium plugins that make advanced animations a breeze. Tools like Draw SVG plugin, which allow you to control how SVG strokes are revealed. Going on down the list, let's check out Morph SVG plugin, which allows you to morph SVG paths into other SVG paths, regardless of the number of points. So you can morph a heart into a star, into a thumbs up, with just three lines of code. And of course, as you saw today, Custom Bounce and Custom Wiggle are going to give you insane control over bounces and wiggles. So we urge you to come by greensock.com club to find out more about the Club Greensock benefits. We have an awesome video up top that'll run you through some cool things in about 90 seconds. And in case you don't know, you're able to try any plugin for free on CodePen. So test drive them all before you buy. And I think you're gonna have a lot of fun and really appreciate the power and control that these Club Greensock plugins give you.